gold, so of course it sands way nicer than a paint that's that's a, you know, a month or something just new or now this morning i came out here to look at the work we did yesterday and boy oh boy i tell you that i am very impressed with the way this little tool has been been working out now because it's going to rain all day and we're on and off all day I'm going to look around. I want to try to find some other things I can use this, these little Dremel tool bits for. I don't know what. Since I, since I haven't done it yet, uh, I'll just basically have my coffee and uh, see what Karen's cooking up in there and see if I can come up with something else to keep me uh, occupied during this sequestration. Now, if it was riding weather, you can bet your life I'd be out riding. But I try to take advantage of all the, the rainy days to at least do the cleanup or the maintenance on the motorcycle and we'll we'll see if we can learn something today now the thing when you have a small motorcycle collection like this especially when most of the bikes are over 25 years old what happens is you always have something to polish there's always something needs a little attention or a coat of wax or a wrench tightened to it or an oil change or a tire check or a swap there's never there's never a time you're just bored to death now i don't know since I've never, I probably in my whole life, I've never owned only one or two motorcycles. Well, I did have only two back in a, a long time ago. But I had as many as seven in the Amar days, and it was always something to do to keep you, well, keep you young. Only it's not working on me. It's not working at all. And I make no secret about it. I like having polished aluminum and paint. And everybody has their own idea of what a beautiful motorcycle is to me. A bike that shows a lot of polished aluminum and a lot of shiny paint that's a good place to start and classic good lines or a thoroughly modern bike with every one of the new modern features and modern brakes and modern motor and everything and just something that's a little unique something that when you park in a parking lot full of motorcycles people walk by and they go oh, what, what year is that uh, what, what year did the factory make that black and gold one or uh, something like that anyway and, and, of course, you make a lot of money doing that. Look how rich I got. And then the best news of all, summer comes, the temperatures break, the pond gets over its, uh, its algae bloom, and we are ready to have a great summer. I hope, I hope we're all out of sequestration very soon. Now it's just given me uh, some things to do. I have these little wire brushes that I'm going to find. I will find things to use them on today. Because on a day like today, there's no chance I'm going to go out riding because of the weather. And I think these, just the other day, I wound up using these. These were really, really good. Now, I don't know about these. I have to figure out. And I got these whole things in one delivery. Well, they all came in one day from Amazon. It's on a previous video, I think two or three videos back. But And I, I have just scratched the surface on what I can do with them. And I'm going to try to learn every day, and I'm going to try to pass on what I learn. Now, it is the time of the year. These fish usually get hungry. All right, boys, it's time. And from that windstorm the other day, I've got plenty of stuff to clean up in the pond after the fish get done eating. I'm sure I have a half hour of work. Oh, yeah. Chilly day. But not in Wendy's house. Only in the garage. Oh, my birds, they never get sick of me feeding them. That's for sure. There's no end to the action. Okay, now what are they? Blueberry muffins we're having? Boy, I'll tell Homemade you. Homemade blueberry muffins. Homemade blueberry muffins. Oh, my God. No wonder I'm gaining weight. So the first thing before I get started, I wanted to thank Turbo Steve, who... Uh, did some research on the internet and found somebody that ceramic coats, which is going to be one of our options over the winter time. They do ceramic coating here only a couple of towns away. I have to go down and talk to the guy and see if if it's going to be a practical solution. What it's one of the solutions, and I haven't talked to Dave Midgley yet about doing that resin coating with Huntsman resin. So a lot of choices, a lot of choices on that. So one of the things I wanted to try with the little uh, polishing wheels on 
and I set up some 2000 grit in Dasa sandpaper, a little stool with a bucket, and I want to try to do, uh, well, we'll do an experimental spoke and just see if we can make it. It's got to be flat sanded first with 2000, and, and obviously it would be easier to do this if I were doing a tire change and had to wheel off the bike, but we're, we're going to war with the army we have now. And I want to try, I'm going to sand one spoke down and then try one of those little buffing balls on it and a little bit of 6085 and see if that's a practical way to do a wheel. If it isn't, we go to plan B. Now, I'm not sure. This paint is probably at least seven or eight years old. And I looked at at the mileage, I put a lot of miles on this bike. I never realized. I bought it, it had 7,000. It's got almost 16 now. So, I never realized. Hey, when you're having fun, you don't keep track of it. Like at a restaurant, when you're eating pizza, you don't keep track of what slice you're on. But anyway, I, I don't know if this is gonna be a practical way of doing it, because when I did these wheels, of course, this was not, I just wanted to make them a little custom. I was not at, trying to make the quality of stuff like we have on a 650, but we're going to find out. And we're going to find out what I like about doing things this way on an experimental basis, because there's really, on a day like today, I don't know what else you can do. And no matter what, cleaning and sanding a wheel and buffing a wheel like this, it's a complicated design. I don't know how efficient this is going to be until I try it. That's the problem with a lot of things in life. Uh, you don't know if it's going to be a pain until you give it a shot. But I know, we, even though we have a relatively nice finish on this, we'll be able to improve it on that one. And then if I'm happy with that, it'll be a question of, what is seven spokes? Seven, and then I'll have to do the bottom side, 14. I'll have to do that from the back. So, and, and in here, I'm not sure I can just run the buffer in there, or I can get that, that sanding stick in there. And then if we go through in any spots, we'll have to just touch it up. And luckily we still have plenty of touch-up paint. So the product that we're going to try on this first, as we always do with paint, for CR, 8065. Now believe it or not, I tried to show this one, I'll try to show this one in real time. I know it's a little boring, but it, to be honest, this is coming up faster than I thought it was. I'm going to have to flip to the other side of the wheel to get that edge. Wow! This is, this is many times better than I thought it would be. Holy mackerel. I think we've stumbled upon something. We're good at stumbling, that's for sure. I want to show this in real time. I hope everybody understands why. Now let me just... I'm using speed 3 and 8065. And I, I absolutely have to show how quick this paint is coming up. You'll be impressed no matter what. Now when I bought this tool, I had no idea how good it, I just thought it's worth a test. Well, I gotta show this in real time. This, I don't wanna shut the camera off, because I know somebody will think, oh, there's some kind of fake stuff going on here. Let me just get in here for now, and do one of these. I've done one, I know I have to do uh, seven, 14 of these. So, I've wiped it off, so you can get some idea how that is. Now, no camera cuts. Let's get the camera right down there. And let's see if you can, and you can get some idea. If you can, yeah, actually you can see my, uh, my wonderful, is that my face? Yeah, that's my face in there. That is amazing. Now you've seen that in real time. That's 2000 grit and no camera cuts and a little bit of 6085. First off, sand in with the with soapy water. Get it flat. Now here's one that isn't done. I think you can see the difference, how lumpy it is and everything, and then one that is done. So I think in the course of this, boy, we've learned already an hour into the day, and we've learned something that's worth sharing. That's definitely worth sharing. So now I've probably got, well, 14 of them to do. 
and may as well not show it over and over again. I've got a couple hours of work to do, but that's something absolutely worth sharing. Now, I'm also excited to see how it's going to work out on the rim, but I'll do all the spokes first, and I can just move it. Now, this is what's nice about having a center stand on a bike, too. Makes it very easy to clean the front wheel. It, when you don't have a center stand for many years like I didn't, you forget how handy it is to have it. Anyway, that's, that's a great thing to learn, and we've got a bunch of buffers, and I've got this little guy, and I've got probably 25 other ones. I hope... If I run out, believe me, I'll buy more. That that was an amazing little test this morning. That's actually worth looking at the whole video just to see. Now the thing I'm learning about this is this paint is six or seven years old, so of course it sands way nicer than a paint that's that's a, you know, a month or something just new or new paint. And and this is what always in my mind always that old school thing of. Uh, now let paint dry and before you buff it out, let it dry as long as possible. In the case of butyrate dope, if you wait a month, it'll buff out a lot easier than if you try to do it right away. Acrylic lacquer likes to dry, but, but the good news is these modern paints seem very forgiving. And this is all modern urethane, so it should be no problem at all. And I'm pretty much devoting the whole day to doing these wheels. Whatever I can do to these wheels, I'll be very happy. And if I don't get it done, if, uh, if Karen finds something important to do, like <laughs> do something that she needs me for, I don't know that she needs me for anything. But anyway, we're surviving. We're trying to get through every day. I'm sure your family is too. And this was absolutely an amazing thing to see how quick that paint came up. Because I could buff these by hand, of course. This would be more than one day job. This would be a big job. But having this, having this little tool, Every day that goes by, I find something else I can do with it that's of some value. And I, have, I haven't even scratched the surface yet. And there are a lot more things out on Amazon to try. So as soon as I get a little, a little fun money, instead of going to Atlantic City and gambling, I'll go buy some more Dremel tool bits. Boy, I just love how I'm only on speed three. I'm not trying to do this any higher speed. One thing bad about these little pads, they throw the, uh, the 8065 all over the place. And I think what I'll try on the next one, I'll try some of the, uh, the mother's polish. And of course, they'll both buff it out. It's just a question of which is gonna work more efficiently. The 8065 brought this up very, very quickly. And again, doing these wheels, it, it becomes a labor of love, but boy, when you're done. It, it really, to me, worth every penny. Now, at some point, we're right about at that point right now where it's starting to bring it up. And you can start doing like this little ziggy thing here. Moving it around and you'll see, and I'm not sure you can see on the video, but that really does. It's so handy to be able to do this. Just unbelievable. This is almost the kind of thing you got to see in real life to believe it. But again, I think we've stumbled upon or we've added something, and I'm, I'm very happy that I can share this little tip because, again, it fits the criteria that I like. It's inexpensive. It's easy to do. Anybody can do this. Takes a little patience. I'm not sure you can see it on the video like I'm seeing it in real life. I wish I had a better macro lens to show this, but I guess we gotta go to the go to war with the gavilta fish we have here. That that really is an eye opener to me. So what I did, I estimated it's about 10 minutes of spoke. So what it means is there's 14 14 sides, and. There's two wheels, so I don't know how long this is going to take. It's probably going to take more than one day. But I think at the end of it, because I really, I always count these bikes as irreplaceable items. It's not something like, I couldn't go to Motorcycle Mall, even if I had uh, Michael Bloomberg's money, and buy one. And these things bring back so many good memories to me. 
and actually all the bikes do even the FCR even bikes only 25 years old but these really old bikes especially the two strokes boy the memories are you can't buy that you can't put it in a jar now what I did I did a little experiment with this uh, the mother's mag and aluminum polish and what happens at a higher speed it throws it off the wheel at four anything above three it just throws the polish off so the thing with this is if I'm going to use this and I've got three spokes done already it's going pretty quick in fact but I don't see a lot of difference in either one they both work about the same now I'm about halfway through the one side of the spokes it's it's really going pretty well but it's taking time like everything it seems like everything I do it just takes mixing concrete <laughs> Just takes a lot of time. But I know the final result on this is going to be when that wheel is done and it's sitting out in the sun, it's going to be, it's going to look a lot nicer than it did. Now, I'm already thinking ahead to later today or tomorrow. See, the back wheel, it's going to be really hard to get in there from a lot of angles. There's a lot of things in the way. But that's why it's always good to do the front wheel first because we have access to this whole side of the wheel. Then I just need to worry about getting, and when I figure out how I want to do the rim, I'm not sure how I want to do that yet, but it, this is the challenge, and this is what makes it interesting to do this. But it's time for a break. The phone just rang, and Karen said, time for a coffee break. And it's always good when you're doing these labor-intensive things. Take a coffee break. So having a coffee break, it looks like the mouse snuck in here and stole a muffin. That is only 11 left for me. Or just like yesterday, the wind is blowing a bird feeder around. But not blowing it so much that they don't come and get their seeds, though, that's for sure. Now, I found this little wheel to be very handy for there's a lot of little angles and edges and corners and things that this just gets right into. It's, it's just amazing how, how these little things work. And the only thing wrong with this one, that, that's not a problem, it's something I can deal with, when you first start using a wheel, it sheds threads everywhere. But if you're doing this, this would be a great idea if it wasn't raining right now to do it outside. Or do it at a lower speed. But it's so useful and it, it brings the paint up so quick on all these little edges and angles. I could never get a big buffer down in there. And when I'm done with this wheel, now I'm taking a lot more time with this wheel than I thought I would because it's coming out so good. I'm actually enjoying doing this. Now I know a lot of people would would not enjoy it, but this is something I really want to have. And this said, as I always say, having wheels, paint job and wheels are the two biggest things. They really set the bike apart in a crowd. Steven did a nice job on the, the brake disc, all these little ribs around the brake disc. These things are so handy until you actually use them, you don't realize how handy they are. And I expect that in the future I'll find a lot more uses for them. This was, this was very unexpected today. They get in every little nook and cranny, it's amazing. Now, possibly the only downside I found to this whole thing, and I knew this might might be a problem because it's a problem with bigger buffing things too. But let me show this. This is something that I think people have to know. As these things wear out, of course they start out looking like that. 
But what happens when they're brand new, they're full of like fuzz. And so when you when you use this, even if you use it with compound and you use it on on this Dremel tool at speed four, what happens? This is a fuzz just blows everywhere. Now, the problem is the fuzz is static, so it sticks to everything. So you really have to wipe it down with some car wax or something. Now, I didn't get a chance to check any of these today, but these, I wanted to get to the end of this video and say, wow, these were a find. These, I thought these were going to be really not that useful. They are super useful, for me anyway. These, I've had good luck with. The problem with these is you, they have a limited use because you got to be careful you don't touch the front of it to the part. But these, again, what I have to look on Amazon and see if you can buy these separate and buy a hundred or so of these. They do wear out, and I've already got a couple of them worn out already in the course of the day, but this is such good information, and I don't know how long you, you could last. But here's the thing. They work even with no compound, except they just keep shedding that dust so if I could do this outside I can't it's a rainy day this this would be a lot better it would just blow the dust away but if you're working in a confined area mm, put a little compound on it seems to make it better and next time we get to work out here I'm gonna I have a couple of rusty bolts I want to try these on but today this was the find of the century this really worked out great I had no idea it was gonna work this good on as I'm looking at the wheel the wheel just looks crazy good. I don't know how else to say it. It looks way nicer than it did this morning. And it was just a couple hours of relaxing work. So as everybody knows, I love my wheels and, and I spend a lot of time keeping them this way. It, that tool, when I bought the tools off of Amazon, I was really, really skeptical. I'm not skeptical at all now, but I do, the couple of things to always caution people about. If you buy the real, genuine Dremel things, the shaft is hardened. What that allows you to do is run them at a much higher speed. But in this case, when you run these tools, these buffers at a higher speed, they burn the paint. So that's not good either. But I would always say, if, you, if you're experimenting with speed and you're running too slow, nothing bad happened. Just going to take you two minutes extra to do it. But all of these little angles and edges and around here and in here and and then at the end of the day I'll wipe everything down with a quick a quick coat of flitz and hopefully well here's another thing that I because this is an evil twin project I'm not done with it yet I still want to do and I didn't want to rush this through today because we're not going anywhere we're landlocked here we may as well be in jail for crying out loud so I'll take another session a work session maybe later in a week do the back wheel because that's going to be way more difficult because there's things on both sides and if it gets real difficult i'll just take the back wheel off the bike that'll make it a little bit easier but but i'm hoping i'm going to be able to with this little tool get in places maybe without even taking a wheel off the bike see that's the whole and and uh, like on the, the the other ninja the green one there's a lot of spots on those wheels and around and up and it, and until you have the tool, you don't know how useful it is. But it is useful. I think it's worth adding to my arsenal. I'm not sure it's going to work for you. you got to be the judge of that. But anyway, I shared the information on two or three videos ago before we even started this project. And every day that goes by, I seem to find more and more stuff to use it on. So it's worth trying if you're prone to want to have these kind of motorcycles. Especially if you have old bikes that you, you want to polish and restore and who knows what. Anyway, hope you did enjoy the video and thanks for watching. These evil twins, I've got six of them now. Six evil twins. Evil twin, that's the word of the day. And I even have one that's an evil triplet. <laughs>